Hey guys, um, part 17 here, so another fun uh, integral, and this one is cited here, so yeah. Um, Alright, uh, and uh, to get started, uh, we need to make a substitution with um, x equal to um, x equal to sig theta. And that's because with this substitution, uh, notice that this here would become secant squared theta minus 1, which we know is tangent squared. So the quantity inside the square root with this substitution will become tangent squared. So after we take the square root, it'll just become tangent. Yeah? Okay, cool. How nice. Um, and then dx will equal um, sec theta times tan theta d theta, right? Okay, so that means that we could rewrite our integral as follows, that it equals, um, it equals 1 divided by... This here is sec theta. And then as I said, this becomes tangent squared theta with this substitution. And so the square root of tangent squared theta is just tan theta. So we have sec theta, tan theta in the denominator. That is really nice because this here um, is dx and that's what goes in the numerator. In fact, I don't even need the one, right? So the numerator is just um, sec theta, tan theta, d theta. Nice. So then we go, boom, boom. So the integral reduces to just the integral of um, d theta, the integral of d theta. And we know that this is equal to theta, but um, uh, the uh, MIT Integration B qualifying exam had us go from one to two. So let's see what we'd have to do as a definite integral. Well, we're not done here anyway, right? We gotta go back to x, because that's how we started. Um, with this here, then we know that it follows that uh, seek inverse of x is going to equal theta. So now that I said let's put on uh, limits of integration, what we have to do is, well actually I can't have the limits of integration here because they are in terms of x's and I had changed to theta by the time we got here, right? So I can't have them on here either, but now we can say that uh, with our original substitution, theta has to equal um, secant inverse of x. And so then now that we've gotten back to x's, uh, to answer the question with the limits of integration, uh, we have to evaluate uh, seek inverse of x at um, 1 and 2 and take the difference between the value at 2 and the value is at 1 as you know. So it's going to be seek inverse of um, 2 uh, minus seek inverse of uh, 1. Now this here could be thought of as whatever um, value this is, right, seek inverse of 2. It's got to be the value so that uh, secant um, of that value is equal to 2. That means that uh, we can translate this to mean uh, that 1 over cosine of that value is equal to 2, which means cosine of that value is equal to 1 half, right? Uh, so cosine of what is equal to 1 half? We know that um, that's got to be... Um, so the value has got to equal um, pi over 6 because cosine of pi, oh, my bad. Cosine of pi over 6 is equal to um, 1 half and therefore secant of pi over 6 is equal to 2. So we've got, um, we've got um, pi over 6, ah, sorry guys, pi over 6, all right, that's for this. And then now we have to work on um, seek inverse of 1. And for seek inverse of 1, again, uh, we can translate it to mean secant of some value uh, is equal to 1. Okay, and that means that um, cosine of that value is equal to 1. So cosine of that value is equal to 1. And we know that uh, that value then will have to equal 0. So, um, so then 
that means we have minus zero, therefore our final answer is pi over six. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, um, this is it, and I hope you enjoyed the solution. Take care.